Bank Lloyd and Partnership with Lloyd. They've all sent me in. And um, um, I know that we, we've, I've been in communication with a few of you, and basically um, we were told, like, we don't really need to be here tonight because you guys are, like, on it with the solar. And I'm so excited by everything I heard earlier when you were talking about the facilities update. Wow. And I want to thank you guys so much for moving on this and taking it seriously and working on making these changes for our schools and for our community. I'm just, like, not even sure if some of the things I was going to say need saying. You know, like, I'm just, I'm really impressed and I'm really pleased with what I heard tonight so far. But I'm still going to talk. Um, that's what I do. I do. I, I do want to. I want to say share something with you guys that you may already know. You may not know um, about just the urgency of the situation as far as climate change is concerned. Um, there was a report issued in April by a number of major climate research groups, and I've got a link. And it's not really a link; it's on paper, but I'm going to give it to you if you want to type it in later. The actual report, um, and in the report. The year 2020 was designated as the final year in which we can continue to burn fossil fuels at our present rate. If 2020 doesn't go down in history as the peak of fossil fuel use, we run the very real risk of crossing these critical tipping points. Um, and a tipping point is basically a, sp a spiral. For, for example, the, the, the permafrost melting. Right now the permafrost is a carbon sink. As it melts, it releases carbon. And methane and these tipping points can spiral out of control where they will start to release more gas which causes more warning which causes more um, gas to be released and human beings won't be able to stop it um and so it's a really dangerous thing that could just cause all the projections on climate to just go like out the window um and there's several of them permafrost is not the only one so the fact that like humanity has waited this long is kind of everyone's fault it's kind of all of our fault and what we're doing now is just really like look at our personal situations and think critically about what each one of us can do right now to start to turn the tide. Um, and what I can do is come in here and tell you about tipping points and implore you like to bump this issue up to the top of your agenda every time. Because we didn't start this process in 2007 or in 97. We waited until 2017. So we don't have any time. Um, to really wait. This issue is just bigger than economics. It's bigger than the bottom line. It's bigger than everything. But, you know, because we made it to 2017, like the economy is turning now and the opportunities to do this don't necessarily have to break the budget like they would have a number of years ago. Um, the second reason that I'm here is to say that, you know, I don't think there's anybody in this room, I don't think there's anybody in this county that doesn't understand the magnitude of this project. Solarizing the school system is a huge, huge proposition. Um, and the, the nonprofits just really don't think that you all should have to do this alone. Um, the public schools belong to all of us, and we've elected you all to be their stewards. But the time has come for the citizens in the county who are able and willing to step up and work with you to do so. And we're ready to do that. Um, Floyd County is full of you know invested, educated, knowledgeable people who are ready to help. And so we just really hope that you guys will let us in any way that we can provide assistance with, you know, community education, grant writing, you know, research, you name it. There are people who want to help with this. So you don't have to carry this on your shoulders. And that's why we decided to come in tonight. Because we got this message like, we're doing it, we're doing it. And we were like, okay, they're doing it, but we can help you guys do it. And so we wanted to just really make that clear and open the door, you know, for this communication. And so um, I wanted to let you know that Sustain Floyd is giving a, an educational presentation about solar energy at the Board of Supervisors on October 10th because um, they were asked. I think it was, um, I guess I can't remember, it was one of them said we really would like more information about solar. And so Sustain Floyd was like, okay, we'll do it. And it's going to be an hour-long presentation, and all of you are cordially invited to attend that presentation. Um, but then the final reason that I came is because we wanted to, you know, see if we couldn't have like a bit of a dialogue with you guys about this, and that's why we're on the agenda and not just in public comments. Um, my first question has been answered already by earlier. Um, <laughs> so it's, are you actively pursuing solar? And obviously you guys are. Um, and so my second question is, are you willing to share the process with the public, like everything that you're doing as it comes up? Well, I think the next step, and I'll answer the best I can, is once we get that initial report 
and they're doing it in three parts like I said because not because there's a priority because of the retainment agreement that way we stay within the cost that the county's paying for it so there is no hierarchy they're just looking at it like that basically to benefit uh, the county Bowie County so once we get that report back, the board will get it, and then the board of supervisors will get it. And then we'll just go for there, from there and, and see what the next stage is. Now, from the standpoint of urgency, um, we do, we, do uh, we break our budgets down to different sections, and we got a really close eye on facility. And we, we do need it, because we're not sitting here with new heating and air conditioning system that are going to eventually cost us more money. So there, there is some good timing going on, like I said earlier. And you know that is also focused the same thing with the urgencies of a little bit different. It's nice that they came up, you know, and, and work together with the urgency factor. But we don't want to be putting forty thousand dollars into something that we're not going to use two years down the road. And and that's where we are. So the next phase would be the information. What we need to do with that, there is a timeline, and that timeline is our current facilities. And you know, anything you all can do and the information you can give, but these Thomas and Litton in this case will give information on solar, give it more importantly on the infrastructure, what we can handle. We'll look at individual schools and that's probably be the next stage. And then we'll see what the information goes from there. But it sounds like he with the presentation of the Board of Supervisors, hopefully will be after they get the information from uh, the engineer so it should time up pretty nice is that meeting on the 10th is that an evening no it's not it's the morning meeting it is but it's at 11 a.m 11 so it's not the standard one i think they made a special meeting for it <coughs> what's the day on it october 10th october 10th at 11 a.m <clears throat> um I, I you know when you guys talk about this new cte building and mm. if you're building a new structure in 2017 ooh, you've got so many opportunities you know to to really look into net zero energy and a new and this should be part of I think our commitment to protecting the planet for our children. Like if we build a new structure, a new public structure, it needs to be net zero energy or as close to net zero energy as possible. And so I, I hope that that's being looked into with these engineers as they're coming. I think what you can do when you see information, yeah, and you want to add to that, and uh, you know this is just one firm on retain, yeah, on retain. So as it grows to see, and the timeline is right before us, then you know we'll see what other come out. But I, they they are aware of that. I know I talked with the engineer about solar. I went around with him about any other form, about net zero, and probably every engineering firm that we would use uh, does do um, financing as far as helping you find your grants. Mm -hmm. They understand the same thing that. Okay. That would be that you all would help us with is the, the cost effectiveness. So they do the same thing, but they know it's out there. So okay. we'll have to see what information they bring back to us. Okay. One thing that came up at our meeting um, last week over and over again was the um, you know efficiency. Like they don't want to put solar panels on the schools unless they've made them efficient first, because then you're you know pumping all this, creating all this energy and it's getting washed out the windows, right? So I mean, we hope that the engineers are looking at. How to make the buildings more efficient, you know, before considering putting the, the panels on to bring the you know utility costs down. Mm -hmm. I think they're looking at that as well as sustaining it uh, long term. What's the impact of, of that as well, right? Yeah, they they are. That's why they asked for, and they we pulled every blueprint, every uh, infrastructure piece of information he needs. Okay. So they, and like I said, this firm has done it before. Okay. So they'll kind of know what to look for. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, one of the other things we were curious about is which technologies for transforming solar power into heat and cooling. Is that is that just like too far down the road? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. I mean, it, it would. They're aware of because they use solar as a sole source. They use solar as a as to um, offset another yeah. source. So, and then he's aware, I mean, he was looking, I asked him about reusable and he understands and he's going to look at the lay of the land as far as what we have available. Uh, and on, on site and off site. 
on site and yeah. off site. I mean, they, you know, you talked about, you know, south facing area for solar panels and possibly, you know, if there was wind opportunity, but they, you know, he didn't come in and say, oh, you can't do this here, you can't do that there. They'll, they'll review everything okay. and uh, Great. do what they say. Great. So, I mean, I guess the only other question I have is all the stuff, the, the engineer's findings and the, the timelines, the timelines that you guys mentioned earlier, all of this is going to be like made public. We'll, we'll present, um, hopefully in the next two weeks, I'll get that back, give it to them, give it to the Board of Supervisors. Okay. I'm going to the Board of Supervisors for our capital improvement, which is no surprise there, but I'll share it with them too, as far as the facility and the timeliness. That, you know, we don't want to get into major repairs if there's opportunities to improve mm -hmm. yeah. our facilities now. And you just hope that that time's up correctly you don't know and we're going to have to do what we have to do to make sure the buildings are, are safe for students but yeah. but we're, we're in good shape right now but it is it, it does help push the timeline thank you guys so much and yeah just be, uh, we'll be in touch with you we'll bother you all the time and you guys be in touch with us <laughs> <laughs> thank you so thank much you. Thank, you. Yes, thank you for that, um, the presentation on the 10th is that what you've been doing anything about that yeah i will not be there but that's the same void. Um, Rick Brown's going to give a piece of it, and then David Wall, I believe, will yeah. be. Okay. Just kind of giving basic information on like how solar works, what's a kilowatt, what is okay. that power, you know? Okay. You said it's about an hour. That's an hour long, yeah. Okay. All right, thank you.